Firstly, just the ABCs of Treasury management, please. Okay, the, the conference we've got is where corporate treasury managers get to meet. And the role of the corporate treasury is really about managing the risk within an organization, managing liquidity within the organization, and manage funding. Um, and those three roles have become of paramount importance to most businesses. Uh, we did a survey uh, the last year and this year on the aspects of treasury is how bullish or bearish are they in terms of mm. their outlook through 2010. And about two thirds consistently, wherever we ask this question, two thirds say they're, they're bullish about what's happening. We then ask a second question, which is, uh, do you think there's more bad news to come? Yeah. And over 50% consistently talk of, yes, there is more, more bad news out there in terms of the markets. So for a corporate treasury, how do I square away this position? Mm. Um, how do I make sure my c company continues to grow mm. despite the economic uncertainty? Okay, now obviously the economic uh, recession and the global credit crisis has posed severe challenges to Treasury management. Are there fundamental changes in approach post the recession? I think what we've seen come through very consistently is that it, it's all about risk management. You were talking about the, uh, the ash cloud, and I used that in the introduction to the conference. So to me, it illustrated two themes. One, the global nature of, uh, of the economies of the world at the moment. You know, who would have thought that uh, a hitherto unknown Icelandic volcano mm -hmm. exploding um, was going to cause the US dollar Kenya shilling rate to, to change? Yeah. And it, it did. Um, the, the second thing was the reaction of the aviation authorities they've hit an unknown situation. This has never occurred before since aeroplanes have been, or jet engines have been flying. And the reaction of the aviation authorities was shut down the airspace. Mm -hmm. And there's a very close analogy there to what the uh, corporate treasurer's view was uh, 18 months ago. We've never been through this level of financial uncertainty. Therefore, the risk measures we put in place are extreme. Um, and going back to the survey results, the reason that I think, and I've verified this with people I speak to, is the reason people can be bullish mm. but yet feel there's more, more bad news is this question of certainty. Uh, the uncertainty is gone. Right. I can take prudent measures. I've stress tested my risk management right. measures, and they seem to be hel right. holding up. Let's stick with the concept of stress testing because we've seen that happening for many companies within the financial services sector here in Africa where liquidity ratios weren't what they're supposed to be, managing liabilities and defaults. And those are things that uh, bankers have to deal with. Are those issues that uh, treasury managers have to deal with just in terms of managing cash flow? And on top of that, the talk of greater regulation of business and industry, does that in any way impact on treasury management? You know, two, two aspects there. From a corporate treasurer's perspective, the questions are, the, the environment is the same as the banks are going through. Questions are slightly different, but whenever there's trouble, there's always a flight, uh, a flight to a safe haven, a flight to a safe currency, flight, flight to safe assets. And um, w when the liquidity is the challenge, then cash is king. Um, and we, again, we've seen organizations stockpiling cash because it's a liquid asset. Mm. Um, so th that really drives some of their behavior. Interestingly, again, yesterday we asked a question of the audience, are you, and we had 200 um, people attending the mm. conference, 75% of whom were from a business corporate background. Um, and they said they are actually starting to diminish some of their cash now. So I think over the last year, the, mm. the, the cash piles have been built. Um, most are saying they're keeping them steady or starting to, right. um, to relinquish this. So again, it comes back to this question of right. certainty. We're more comfortable now. Um, in terms of uh, the effect of the banking community, um, yes, I think it's fairly clear there will be uh, more regulations. The regulators trying to organize this right. at a global level to create the level playing field. There is likely to be impact on, uh, on corporate treasuries. Uh, the cost of borrowing in terms of spreads on, uh, on base rates has, right. has been high. It's always a bone of contention. You know, the corporate treasurers will always say, we're paying too much for our money. And the bankers say, no, no, now you're paying a fair rate. Right. And again, we had a very healthy discussion on that yesterday. 
And again, I think the, the uh, view is the, the spreads may ease back slightly, but it's not going to get back to the stage of where, where credit was yeah. underpriced in the market, where it's relatively uh, low cost. And then let's uh, apply all of this theory to the East African context. We're seeing uh, a lot of moves and a big drive to introduce electronic trading on the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Uh, technology has revolutionized transactions uh, between the consumer and the institution, for instance, mobile banking. How does that impact on real-time settlements in transacting and how does that impact on Treasury management? Uh, from a corporate treasury perspective, there's two ends of the, uh, the payments infrastructure. So there's the, the high value infrastructure where you referenced uh, real time growth settlement. Um, and that is mission critical to the corporate treasuries, both in terms of efficiency. I want to do my business electronically and I want to make sure the infrastructure is robust, secure. Mm -hmm. And most countries now have um, good, reliable infrastructure and the banks, who are the, uh, the conduit through which corporate treasurers work, mm -hmm. are increasingly implementing more mm -hmm. electronic ways of dealing with that infrastructure. Right. So that's in, in pretty good shape, but will right. continue to be worked on. At the other end of the spectrum, you reference mobile banking, and Kenya is always held up as a, uh, a leading light through the, the M-Pesa in mm -hmm. terms of what's happening and what's possible on mobile banking. Um, and that really drives towards financial inclusion, uh, creating more economic activity. Uh, the financial systems really underpin mm. economic growth. You can't get good economic growth right. unless you have that good infrastructure. Um, we were the keynote speaker um, yesterday. We had um, uh, the, the director general of the 2030 vision right. uh, deployment talking to us, uh, Mugo Kabata. And he talked about the financial sector as one of the pillars of the 2030 vision um, and that the banking community right. is uh, being engaged in that along with the user community. And, and Peter Green, just very briefly, we know that there are lots of efforts to consolidate regional integration or to deepen integration, uh, a common market coming up in uh, East Africa and even talk of a single currency and duty-free trading and transacting within East Africa. Will that have an impact on uh, Treasury management? Yeah, clearly from the, the free trade zone, uh, duty-free trading, um, I think places where these have been introduced before, it increases the level of business, gives more opportunity, uh, the region as a whole should benefit. It's interesting, again, we were talking earlier about stress testing, um, and I think, I'm sure, the, the, those that are responsible for right. um, deciding on whether in, to implement a single currency within the East Africa region will be taking a long, hard look at Europe at the moment, because it's the first time the Eurozone has really been stress right. tested in terms of one member nation. Mm -hmm. um, so, invariably, because of convergence criteria, these single um, currency zones mm. are set up during the good times. You need to have that in order to create right. the convergence. Um, and let's stress test it. All right, thanks a lot for your inputs. Peter Green, Senior Eurofinance Tutor and Director for TransactionBank.com in the UK. Just a quick comment from you. Um, what role can financial chiefs play, for instance, as a government articulates its vision through Vision 2030, and as they, as corporate chiefs, try to grow their businesses in an East African environment, but also need to manage their liabilities uh, and ensure that they have liquidity as business? I think, that, I think the critical issue for me in Africa is that <coughs> African, <coughs> African business brings a whole set of new, or a whole set of dynamics which aren't yeah. necessarily at play in, in, in G7. And I think you need to take those into consideration. One of those is the fact that you can't necessarily just create uh, liquidity from a bank, or you can't just you know, mm -hmm. borrow money from a bank willy nilly like you potentially could in the mm -hmm. past <coughs> in G7. And I think if you take this stuff into consideration, you know, the kind of measures and the kind of stuff that you need to take into consideration from a financial chief perspective right. is very, very important to make sure and ensure the survival of, right. your, of your business in these regions.